Hello everyone, Anita here and welcome to week 10 of the 52 weeks illustration challenge. Um, this week's theme is, was actually, <laughs> animal. And so as you can see, I've decided to paint some crabs. <laughs> And I'm actually painting on much thinner paper because my usual 300 gram paper was sold out, so it's made me really, really sad. And so um, I'm actually pre-stretching my paper. <laughs> it's um, I call it the lazy man's pre-stretch <laughs> because what I'm doing is basically I'm just wetting my um, taped paper really thoroughly and then um, just drying it. And that really helps with the buckling. It does not. Uh, eliminate it completely, but it helps a lot. And so after the initial um, just, you know, wetting, <laughs> stretching of the paper, I then just um, do another wet um, layer and then I drop color onto that layer. And I have much less buckling than I would have initially. So that, that really helps. Um, and if you are wondering why I have this washi tape around my painting, it's because my camera has a problem with focusing when the paper, uh, when there's white on white, and I'm actually using... I, I believe this is something like the gator board I've been um, hearing about. It's just a board with the foam uh, inside, but uh, the layer, the top layer is not... Uh, absorbent, it doesn't absorb water, so that it really works well when you want to stretch paper. And so I'm dropping in the first initial colors. As you can see, the paper is buckling a little bit, but it's really minimal. And it, um, the more I wet the paper and then dry it, um, the, le the, the less <laughs> it's buckling, so that's good. I'm, I'm spraying the paper a little bit as well, just actually playing very with this one um, and I'm kind of trying to figure out what colors I want to use. Uh, I've decided beforehand that it's definitely going to be blue and red because I wanted to have some gradients. But I wasn't really sure how I wanted to apply it, if I wanted to be a smooth gradient or I wanted to be just like, as, as you can see here, just, just watercolor effects. <laughs> And so I'm just kind of experimenting a little bit, dropping in colors. Here I have uh, the same blue and red mixed into, um, uh, just pre-mixed into purple. Just because I actually um, didn't really want the red and blue to mix on the paper. I wanted them to be a little separate, but I still wanted to have the indication of a purple here and there. I wanted to have more control over it, so um, that's why I'm dropping it myself <laughs> instead of letting the paint mix. And here, uh, my biggest mistake of this painting. <laughs> I've purchased a new type of masking fluid recently. After the mistake from a few um, weeks back. Uh, with the Molotov masking fluid and this one is this is something different um, It's much thinner than the Molotov uh, masking fluid, but initial testing made me like really happy about it And I just um, it uh, you know, it kind of came off really nicely It dried quickly and I think in this case I just put too much Masking fluid because it was drying forever, but a little bit more about it in a second for now I'm doing um, the gradient and I'm using a bigger brush this time I kind of gave up on using smaller brushes, um, just for the ease. It's much easier with a big brush. And I've recently found a brush that I was happy with, so, you know, just testing. And as you can see, I'm doing the gradient in two layers. I'm not letting the colors mix on the paper, it'll just wet on wet. Because I was afraid that it would just get too muddy. In my opinion, in my personal opinion, just the way I draw, for me personally, it's much easier to create a nice even background, about even gradient in the background, if I just paint it in two layers, like that. So first one color, then the other on top, just layering it. And here I'm using some masking tape <laughs> for um, to create some like the underwater uh, light beams. And I, this is also an experiment, because I've never done this before, I've only seen it um, done by other artists, and I really wanted to try it. So I thought, you know, what, what, better, what better chance I would get? <laughs> I 
So this is just the underwater scene, and so I'm just applying very thin, uh, kind of like, I wanted to imagine how the beams of light would go. This is nothing really, of course, specific. <laughs> this is just kind of like an indication that the beams of light would go there, just to give some extra detail to the background. And then I'm coming in with this darker um, premixed blue, and it's still the same two colors, just the red and blue. And I'm just, uh, in this case, it was just a little bit of the red added to the blue. And it created this really gorgeous uh, shade of like midnight purplish blue. Really beautiful color. I did not expect these colors to mix like this. And it made me wonder if maybe I'm not really paying attention here to some extra, like I should maybe probably do some mixing. <laughs> Because I, I seriously, I had no idea these two colors on my own palette could create such a shade, so... I'm definitely doing some, uh, some mixing soon. And I'm just working uh, between those, um, those strips of masking tape. I could probably just paint over it, like uh, over, the, over the strips, but I was afraid that um, the paint would seep underneath. Uh, the um, when I was cutting the the, the, the masking tape, <laughs> um, a lot of the glue, of course, came off because I was sticking it to the table first, and um, also the um, it was coming on top of the masking fluid, and so there was some space. I was really afraid to actually paint over everything, and there was also a lot of those strips are very thin, and some of the ends were coming off, so I had to be really gentle. But it, it came out perfectly fine, actually working in those, um, you know, the sections gave me a little bit more control over what I was doing. And so I'm basically just dropping some color and they're feathering it out with the big brush. And this brush is really nice compared to the other one I had, this one is much softer and uh, I really liked soft brushes. <laughs> so, well, of course I'm painting with watercolor. The other one was not even a watercolor brush. And then I'm deepening the color a little bit. I actually didn't plan on putting so much, but at some point I was like, nah, I kind of like this color so much, I'm just gonna put more. <laughs> and uh, I was actually not paying much attention. As you can see, I'm fixing a lot of the mistakes because I didn't want the color to go over the crabs, the red. But I wasn't paying attention and I just kind of stroked towards the towards the crabs, and then I got paint streaks of that blue on top of the red. And I tried to feather it out, but it didn't always work, so I have actually a lot more blue on top of the red that I, will, that I wanted to have. And now the biggest issue <laughs> I came across, okay, when I was actually... Uh, the, the masking tape came off beautifully. Now I got into some trouble here. Um, <sighs> I was trying to be really gentle. It looks much more uh, harsh than uh, than I, I was really, really gentle. Um, this masking fluid did not want to come off the paper and it made a huge mess. It took off a layer of paper um, and it, it, it didn't really... Yeah, I didn't really have a problem with painting on top of it and I was really surprised by that. I think it's because the painting, um, the masking fluid did not go over the over the fine liner and that kind of helped uh, create a border so that the paint did not seep like over the fine liner and that really kind of rescued me <laughs> but I still um, the, the, mm, the texture that was created in the spots was really uneven and very streaky and um, I was really really unhappy about it I rescued it in the end I mean I just kept working but I was really really unhappy and the reason, I think the problem was not the actual masking fluid, the problem was me. Uh, because the masking fluid was drying for so long, I actually used um, the heat gun to kind of warm. I didn't really put the heat over the masking fluid, but I am kind of like feathered it out. I kind of warmed it up a little bit so that... It, I didn't boil it, I didn't burn it, I just warmed it up a bit so that it, would, it, it dried faster. But from what I've noticed, there was this thin layer over the paper, like as if the masking fluid separated. 
And I will... That's just the first thought I had. I mean, I finished this painting at 5 in the morning. And today is the day after, so I didn't really have time to think about it too much. But that's my initial thought. I, am, I'm, I really liked that masking fluid. It was really... It's not as good as the one I have um, that I normally use. But for a novelty thing, you know, I will give it a little bit more. It's definitely better than the mold of one, so it's definitely worth a second mm, experiment. And as you can see, I'm I'm not really talking about the painting anymore, <laughs> but there's nothing really happening. I'm just adding extra layers, feathering them out. I wasn't really... Um, because I was so upset with the fact that the crab and the skin of the girl were kind of destroyed. I was so upset about it that um, I wasn't really thinking anymore about adding any detail to the background. I just wanted to finish this painting as fast as possible and as best as possible. So what I do usually in that kind of situations, I'm kind of trying to uh, do some interesting things with like with color, not with like, with, with, with color. <laughs> So what I will do here is that I will let the color, I will put the first layer of uh, first wash of this red, for example, on the crabs, and I will feather it out into the background, uh, leaving this kind of like a pinkish red. Um, and then I will come again after the initial layer dried and do more detailed coloring. And so you have this like... <laughs> the color seeps into the background and it creates a little bit of more interesting patterns and little splotches. Something to let the eye hang on, if that makes sense. It's a really good idea if you're just kind of um, concentrating on the character, I suppose. So, um, initially I wanted to have those rays of light create, like, you, you know this, uh, when the... the uh, <laughs> I'm making a lot more sense at the moment. If you know that effect the sun makes on at the bottom of the sea, when the sun shines through the water and it creates this kind of um, the pattern that just moves and is very shiny, I wanted to draw that on top of the crabs. Um, but in the end, as, as I said, I was so upset with the masking fluid, I just gave up on that complete, almost completely. In the end, I'm just doing some little lines on top of the crabs, but... And so, um, to give them a little bit more detail, um, I've added just a pattern on top of them. And so, just to make them a little bit more interesting. And then I'm just, I'm still working with the two same colors. I'm not adding any color <laughs> yet, except that red, and that one red, and that one blue. And um, so th this is just basically red, blue, and then the purple, <laughs> for now. So uh, the blue goes mostly for... Um, it's it, The blue is the water and the red are the crabs, so I'm using also the blue for the shades, for the shading, because underwater, of course, everything will be blue. It made sense to me at that time. <laughs> and I'm adding basic, really basic shading. Um, I'm not really concentrating on anything. I'm, I'm kind of thinking more about just the, the general gradient feeling of the background. And as you can see here, I'm adding just the skin, and the skin was supposed to be darker, but I was really afraid that it would be just too splotchy. And, <laughs> and it was really hard to paint on top of that damaged paper. I did my best. But even then layering on top of it did not help. It just made the paper look dirty. And... Uh, I should have gone with even lighter skin, now that I think about it. Because it was really hard to actually put any any detail on top of it. And it's actually, to be quite honest, it's much less visible in person than it is. It's really visible when I, when I made a photo and put it in Photoshop. I just, every single little detail was visible of that, of that ruined paper. But in person, you know, with all the layers on top, it's not that, it doesn't really stand out that much. So uh, the Copic actually helped a lot. Kind of covered the dirtiness because there were still little pieces of that masking fluid getting stuck to the paper. Um, and I really, I know I'm talking a lot of bad, saying a lot of bad things about the masking fluid, but I actually really think that this was my fault in this case. 
Um, so please don't really <laughs> pay attention to that that much. Um, as you can see there on the side, I tried to do that that little design, uh, but I I, did, I wasn't I wasn't really into it. Um, I was so extremely tired at that point that I just completely gave up. And I was also struggling with the hair color. Initially, I wanted it to be a little bit more greenish to kind of play off of the red. But as as I've said, as I was really afraid to add a darker color and that was supposed to be a darker green. So I just kind of thought, okay, I'm just going to go with the yellow and also for the eyes, this is a lighter color. It kind of covered the the, 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 the structure of the paper. That one worked really well and I tried to kind of shade it a little bit, even it out. As you can see, I'm putting a lot of um, colored pencil and I'm trying to even the lines, but everything I put, it was just feathery, it was just, it didn't have the smoothness anymore. The smoothness of the paper got ruined. Um, so, very, very unfortunate. So I'm adding, I'm sorry, I added so many different colors on top of that little piece of hair. I didn't even touch the back, because I just the front did not want to work. And I tried a little bit of orange and uh, brown, yellow, I tried black. <laughs> and then I just settled on the Copic, just added a little bit more Copic shading. And I was like, you know what, I will just leave it, because the more I keep adding, the worse it will get. And my Copic tip got um, a little bit ruined, so I had to cut it. I'll have to get a new one eventually. <laughs> And I'm just really, because the character was like the crowning, like no, 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 the focal point of the painting. So it was, it really kind of bummed me out that, you know, that it got ruined. So I try, I put really a lot of uh, attention to f trying to fix it. So I really feel like I did the best I could. And it came out really decent. <laughs> and here is the, um the extra thing that I'm putting a layer of white gouache over the dress to create this transparent fabric effect. I really love doing this technique. I used it in previous paintings as well and I absolutely love it. It's create this really nice um, soft effect like, the, like there's a really a fabric there and you can just keep layering as you can see the initial layer is very thin so I just keep, um, I wanted it to be quite even, so I keep going over it. And then when it, that dries, I go with another layer and just made it a little bit shorter so that, you know, her all, her little bum <laughs> is covered. But, um, but then the lower it goes, the more transparent it gets and it kind of creates this, I had the feeling that that kind of dress would feel really nicely underwater, just flowing gently organically under under the sea <laughs> so i'm really happy with this one and it kind of covered this the skin um most of the skin and the white did a really nice job because this is light color so um it actually made a really nice job of covering the <laughs> mistakes i've made and initially I wanted to add even more detail to the dress but as i said a lot of the things i wanted to do got kind of forgotten because um, because I just I was really really disappointed with that with that fiasco that I've done with the masking fluid. I'm adding just a little of white lines just kind of an indication that there are some folds in the fabric just an extra detail not much really nothing extra special. As you can see here, I made a small mistake, but that's okay. You can always work it into the background. The only problem here is that when I try to um, rework some of the dress, I need to rework everything because that's how gouache works. <laughs> once you touch it, once it dries and you want to draw on top, you have to bear in mind that you're going to reactivate the layer underneath. So, and then I'm just adding um, 
some smaller white details in the places when they are really where they are really necessary. So the eyes, the cheeks, and I would probably add much much more once again because of the masking fluid. I didn't do it. And then I'm taking my little um, gel pen, and this is a new gel pen that I um, purchased recently. And I usually use the um, the Signo Broad. Um, but this is a different one. This is a regular Signo and it's in angelic white. It's a little bit more transparent than the um, broad one, but it has a much finer tip and it kind of layers nicer. So it really reminds me of gouache in a pen form. <laughs> it's not of course the same consistency as gouache, but it comes really close in the color and the application way, so I like it a lot. It just depends on what you want to use it for. I'm adding just a little bit of the shine on top of those rays of light. Just for extra added detail. Um, because at the point, <laughs> without all the things I wanted to add in the beginning, it looked a bit awkward. Just random strips in the background, just without any point. And so I figured if I kind of outline them with a little bit of white, it will... Just knowing me and my way of drawing, it will indicate that this, these are light sources because they are shiny. So... <laughs> and I just keep going over it. Um, the one thing I can say about those the gel pen is that it does not uh, go on as smoothly as the broad one. Uh, you have to kind of work it a little bit more. But it's a nice alternative. And here, as I said before, I'm adding a little bit more detail to the uh, to the crabs. Because I was I've decided, okay, if I'm already adding all the sparkle to the light beams, I might as well add the sparkle to the crabs. They they just looked a little bit sad, <laughs> just left behind. And initially I wanted to add them only to the back, but then just the front ones would be left out. I just, you know, you have to, I, when I work on one thing, I just try to even everything out so that everything belongs together. So that's it. That's the painting. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to see it in more detail, you should head to my Facebook page. And um, yeah, please leave me a like. I really appreciate them. It shows me that you want to see more of those videos. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!